Hey, 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 people! It's me, Caroline, and I am still running for office. But I need your help. Hotshot Randy McMillan, the incumbent candidate I am running against, is backed by some big money sponsors. Our message is strong, but if we can't get it out to the voters, no one will know who we are. Truly, campaign financing has been seen as the biggest determining factor in who gets elected. So, put your money where your vote is and send me your cash, please. By the end of the lesson today, you should be able to identify the methods candidates use to promote themselves, discuss the ways in which campaigns are financed and regulated, and analyze the impact campaign messaging and financing have on the campaign process. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to answer this essential question. How does political messaging and campaign financing impact the campaign process? Let's find out. Think back to our last lesson. We learned that the campaign process, including elections, is founded on specific key democratic principles, such as popular sovereignty, federalism, and liberalism. Today, a candidate has to manage numerous media platforms in order to promote themselves, promote their ideas, and oppose their opponents' positions. Much of this needs to be funded through private donations or from a candidate's own wallet. And as the media has changed, the cost of elections have changed with it. Guess how much was spent on the 2020 election cycle? Just take a wild guess. Are you seated? $14.4 billion. As you can imagine, many critics point to a need to curb the spending as it pulls resources away from other vital areas. Still, proponents argue that allowing persons to donate to campaigns is a vital form of free speech that should be protected. Okay, so what I am about to say may be something that doesn't need to be said, but it's so important to know, we're going to say it anyway. Messages from political organizations are biased and are, therefore, a form of propaganda. Political messaging is not information from the government, but is instead messaging from political parties or individual candidates. And political messaging is guaranteed as a legal form of speech and expression. It can be a tricky business catching whether a message is a political message or not. There are some common techniques that groups use that can clue you in. One of them is the use of something called a glittering generality. A glittering generality is when a person makes a broad, sweeping statement about a complex issue or topic. One example of a glittering generality can be found in the Trump campaign slogan, Make America Great Again. Whoa, did I go there? I just did. But wait, another example is Obama's slogan, Yes, We Can. Let's pick these apart. Now, make America great again sounds like a good thing, right? I mean, who couldn't get behind that? Well, then you start asking the questions, such as what does greatness look like for America? Or how will we make America great? These answers reveal policies and stances on issues that the slogan itself does not reveal. Policies and stances that require consideration and debate to fully grasp their depth and substance. See. Make America great again sounds great, but it's very general. Now take Obama's slogan, yes we can. Think about it. You're in a rough situation and you worry you can't get out. What do you want to hear? That we're all in it together and yes we can. Think of all the possibilities of what we can do. No, but wait, seriously. Think about all that could really be done, both good and bad. And you may start to realize that there are some things you actually don't want to have happen. But hey, yes we can sounds great, right? It's glittery, but it's a generalization that attempts to simplify the complexity of the political issues facing the nation. Another of these tactics we're going to call just plain folks. 
I mean, who doesn't like your average, down-to-earth, regular person? By mirroring popular attitudes, lifestyle choices, and behaviors, candidates tend to try to present themselves as common people. That doesn't mean that that politician actually enjoys fishing, drinking coffee, and watching baseball. As we said, most candidates come to the table with loads of independently owned wealth and can have vastly different backgrounds than their potential voters. So? Not always true. Watch out for it and research who these people really are. To explore more of these techniques, hop over to the PDF after you finish the video. Time for a show what you know. What is political messaging? Why is it a form of propaganda? Finally, please list some examples of techniques used. Those are some techniques used in political messaging. Now, let's look at a couple different types of messaging. The first type we will discuss is messaging that centers on issues. Issue-centered messaging tends to come in the form of super PAC ads. These ads cannot endorse a candidate, but can endorse a message. Typically, these ads are very misinforming and extreme. The other type is candidate-centered messaging. These ads directly endorse a candidate, and they often utilize propaganda to promote a candidate's character and beliefs. In the past, candidates did not need to reveal which ads they endorsed. This lack of transparency provides an edge, because since the audience does not know who supports the ad they are watching, the ad can sway viewers in a more subtle way towards supporting a candidate. This technique was made illegal, however, by the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act, also known as the McCain-Feingold Act. With that, let's show what you know. What are the different types of political messaging? Finally, let's talk dollars and cents. How are campaigns financed? You may not be surprised that the nature and volume of political messaging and campaigning has led to large amounts of money spent during election cycles. And the more money that is spent on political campaigns, the more the role of money in elections is both justified as well as criticized. Let's go deeper. One issue concerning campaign finance centers on differentiating between hard and soft money. Double word alert! Hard money is money given directly to a candidate. Soft money is money spent to influence an election or party building activities. So there's hard money, soft money, and oh yeah, dark money. <laughs> Word alert! Dark money refers to political spending in which the donor is not required to disclose itself. In general, people debate the role of money in elections. Undoubtedly, it can give larger degrees of influence to corporations, large special interest groups, and wealthy individuals. Think about it. How might this impact democracy? the campaign process, and levels of corruption. Is this a good or bad thing? Now, these different ways to donate to a campaign have not been the same forever. Many pieces of legislation have been drafted, approved, changed, and vetoed when it comes to campaign finance laws. But in the 20th century, a serious attempt was made to rein in hard and soft money. The most recent was the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act mentioned earlier. The BCRA was designed to address soft money loopholes around previous campaign finance regulations. It set limits on money spent by different organizations such as corporations, trade unions, PACs, and wealthy individuals. It also prevented electioneering communications 30 days before primary and 60 days before a general election, and required donor disclosures. However, a recent Supreme Court case, Citizens United v. Federal Elections Commission, struck down an important provision in the 2001 Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act. This case is very important, students, so please, listen up! The provision in the BCRA limited the amount of money corporations, trade unions, or PACs could spend in electioneering communications used to influence voting. 
but in Citizens United, the court declared that, no matter their identity, a person or a group can spend as much money on political messaging as they want. This ruling established that money in politics is now a protected form of speech. The outcome of Citizens United versus Federal Elections Commission resulted in a boom of so-called soft and dark money through the creation of super PACs. While PACs, or political action committees, have existed for a long time, Citizens United led to an uncapped, seemingly infinite amount of soft money spent on political messaging, hence the creation of super PACs. These super PACs have to identify themselves and their donors, but, and this is critical, so pay attention, undisclosed individuals can create nonprofit groups that act as donors to the super PACs so they are able to avoid true disclosure. This is what has created what has been termed the dark money loophole. Let's take a moment to show what you know. What are the different types of political money? How did the BCRA attempt to regulate campaign financing? How did Citizens United impact campaign financing and political messaging? In the wake of Citizens United, the amount of money spent on election campaigns has dramatically increased. This increased focus on funding has changed the way candidates and their parties campaign. Candidates now tend to spend less time focusing on ideas and their platforms and instead spend more time trying to secure funding. Because of this shift, whether a candidate is viable has become based more on how much money a candidate can raise rather than on how solid a person's ideas are. And although slander has been a traditional part of campaigns, the sheer amount of messaging pushes campaigns into an analysis of character rather than a focus on issues and ideas. These personal attacks become a barrier for lesser known candidates and often keep average people from running and participating in the process. And finally, and maybe most obviously, it undermines the political voice of those without large amounts of money to donate to their preferred candidates or campaigns. Check out the PDF to find a guide that helps answer the essential question for this lesson. Recap! Today we learned that political messaging is not official government information, but rather it is political propaganda meant to influence voters. We learned that political messaging comes through a variety of methods and media platforms and has tended to increase the cost of elections. We also learned that, in the 20th century, there were attempts to limit donations from organizations and individuals. However, since the Citizens United case, the role of soft money has greatly increased. Finally, the increased role of money in the campaign process reduces the ability of the average citizen to either run or participate in the process and has further turned campaigns into market activities rather than the promotion of political ideas. And that's all for us today. In the next lesson, we look at exactly what happens on election day in America. That is, if we have the funds to keep our campaign going. Farewell, and don't forget, vote, debate, and participate. Hey, hey.